Well, good morning, everybody. This is Rhonda Abrams with the Web TV Trailblazers. We are uh, very honored today to have as our last interview of the summit, um, our second annual summit, uh, Ronnie Benson, who is the uh, Hangout Helper. And Ronnie is known for the Hangout Mastery uh, class that he has in his, and um, Ronnie, um, why don't you go ahead and tell us how you became a Google tester? Because Ronnie's been doing this for so long, Google comes to him first. Uh, one of the first people he goes to to uh, uh, test out all the new stuff that Google has for Hangouts and other Google products. Go ahead, Ronnie. You bet. I um, uh, Just a little background for, for your viewers that aren't familiar with what I do or where I come from. I, in the past, used to be a trainer. I trained people. Actually, I still am, I guess. Um, I was full-time training, and I was helping people understand the Adobe suite of products, primarily in the print world. This is a long time ago. And so I developed some skills as to how to do training, because I would literally travel all over the world as a subcontractor for a training company, and they just sort of had me stand in front of people and teach them. So I learned the process of how what I called to dance verbally because you have to start a sentence and then somehow finish it if you didn't use the right words at the beginning just make it sound good by the time you're done and that was a skill very good at it. <laughs> oh, thanks that was a skill I had to learn it took me tw I did it for 12 years and so there was a fair amount of time doing that and I got tired of the travel honestly because I was literally on the road almost all the time so eventually I got involved, and I'm, I'm fast forwarding here, I got involved with a thing called Video SEO, which stands for Video Search Engine Optimization. And that means how do I make videos show up higher in search engine results so people will get a chance to see them more readily. And then we're going to jump again, quick fast forward, Google Plus comes out. And Google Plus, because it's owned by Google, in fact a lot of people like to say it is Google, which it is. Um, you sort of pay attention if you're in the SEO world, the search engine optimization world, whatever Google does, you kind of have to pay attention because they're the main player. It's and Google's so, world and we all just live in it. That's right. <laughs> <laughs> so when the Google Plus thing came out, I embraced it, spent a lot of time on it trying to figure out is this going to help me rank in search engines, and it worked amazingly well. In fact, to the point where people were contacting me saying, Ronnie, what are you doing? You're taking over my search results that I've had for the last five years. I said, great, it's working. <laughs> and um, then this Hangout thing came out. And at first, they had the Hangout tool, which was just the video conference. And we'll talk about the, the, the particulars in a moment. But then they came out with the Hangout on Air tool. And that was the key for me, because that Hangout on Air would automatically make a video. And now you're tying in my training, you're tying in the video, SEO, and the fact that Google's doing it. And all those seem to come together for me in such a wonderful way because whenever a tool's new, people need to, le need to learn how to use it so I could start training them. Then Google sort of noticed the fact that I was getting traction with helping people learn how to use the Hangout on Air tool and invited me to be in their beta testing team, which they call Trusted Testers. And for the first year and a half, we weren't able to say that. We couldn't say it publicly. I'm still under a non-disclosure or an NDA, <laughs> but they are allowing us to say that we're part of the testing team. So there you go. Oh, that is that is wonderful. So um, how does that work a little bit, being part of the testing team, just out of curiosity? I know you can't say a whole lot, yeah. but... Well, I, there's, there's parts I can say. Basically, um, they're... They don't always give us all the heads up before things go live, but they'll say, here's an example of something we'd like you guys to test. And then we poke around at it. They give our accounts some special access to different tools that other people don't have quite yet. And then we give them feedback. They're engineers, and so they like the feedback from marketers or people that are users of the product. Um, and sometimes the feedback isn't always positive, but we give it to them, and then they hopefully make adjustments, and then by the time we've tested it a bunch more, they say, okay, we're ready to roll it out, and they do the rollout. And by then, we, the testers, have already sort of experienced the process. It's a little tricky because for me as a trainer, I have to then review what got made public because if you've ever done any beta testing of things, sometimes 
you get to see things that don't make it into the public release. And so something might have looked really good and I might have really liked it, and if I talk about it and it's not there, it sounds weird. So I have to usually research again what it is that actually came out publicly to make sure that what I'm aware of is actually truly what everyone else sees. Oh, okay. Well, wow, that sounds a little tricky there. Uh, yeah, they should pay me for this. They don't. <laughs> <laughs> yes, but it, it, it uh, makes you the Hangout helper slash master. And can you tell us a little bit about your Hangout Mastery? What you is bet. that all about? Yeah, the Hangout Mastery is a membership site that I run for people that are interested in mastering Hangouts. And people come in for either a month. It's a month-to-month -month membership situation. They can come in for a short time or as long as they want. We've got about, right now, is about 200 people in it, and almost half of them, or right around half, have been in there for more than a year. And the reason why is this thing keeps changing. And so in that environment, there's a lot of things that happen. One, I help update people as soon as I can legally. You know, I can't violate my non-disclosure. Um, but as soon as something's out, I let them know. And then I tell them, let's talk about this, and here's what it means, why it matters. It may not mean anything for you, but for someone else it might, and here's why. So that's my role there, primary role. The secondary thing is I help guide conversations because people in that group are frequently saying, this is not working, this is broken, I tried to do this, etc. And I try to give feedback immediately if I see it, and other members are now also able to give feedback. And if in the process the conversation gets a little bit weird, I try to bring it back on focus to where it might need to be in order to keep the, uh, keep the validity of what's going on, I guess. But what really happens there, which I'm incredibly happy about, is a lot of the members help each other. And so they're saying, I want to test this. Is there anybody out there that can do this with me? And then people will volunteer, and then boom, they're off doing Hangout testing. Because honestly, the tool still continues to change. And so it's a good idea when something new comes out to test it, see if it looks like you expected or it's working what you expected, etc. So that's an incredibly valuable place for that. A lot of people are helping each other doing testing as well as this is kind of another bonus for members. People have started to do shows together saying, I really like how you're commenting and then you build relationships with other members and that can turn into a joint venture or all kinds of different things. So wow. it's a really cool place. Yeah, it sounds like a really cool place. It sounds like a place I probably need to be because I found out the hard way because I got busy after I did the summit last year and I didn't really, I think I did a couple of tutorial hangouts and I didn't really do anything for at least six to nine months, I would say. And mm -hmm. then I did this and it's like, oh my God, everything's changed. And yeah. Like, you a panic <laughs> email because I couldn't even figure out how to do the live because the live is is relatively new too. So um, straight through YouTube anyway. Um, so um, what are the benefits of doing Hangouts? Why are all these people coming to your mastery to learn how to do Hangouts? How are they using them? Well, there's two two big components. Actually, there's three kinds of Hangouts, and the two that most people focus on are the video type. And that means you can have a regular Hangout video call or you can have a Hangout on Air. And the Hangout on Air is what most people come to the mastery group to try to learn and make sure that they're staying up with. Because what it does is it's a broadcast channel. You can think of it this way. You've got your own private broadcasting channel. And when I say private, that means you could limit who sees it or you can make it public. Your choice, but you have it and it costs you zero dollars to use. So the a nice number. Yeah, the ability to take and make your own promotional materials that are live and you can do interaction with your client base or your viewers is just amazing because this is one of the best parts I think about Hangouts on Air and also one of the least used parts is the ability to be very interactive with it. We can let people that are watching ask a question and we can bring that question right up onto the screen. Like, for example, I'll bring this up from Coach Moore. This is a comment he made saying, boy, Ronnie, we have a lot in common. <laughs> so one of the things I just did right there is I was able to take one of the viewers and let them be part of the show by just bringing their comment right onto the screen. That, to me, is live interaction. And Coach Moore can ask another question, and we can bring that up, and we can answer it. So the ability for someone on the outside to, to speak to the TV and the TV speaks back 
live is something that I don't think you really get anywhere else. And that's one of the uniqueness factors about Hangouts on Air that I think really makes it stand out. And then not only that, if you and I had a third or fourth or fifth person in this video room with us right now, we also have interaction capability right there where people, like you and I, we're just talking to each other and others are watching that. But right. it's also possible to have interaction with lots of other people in the film strip, that little area. But because there's only two of us, they don't see the film strip out there right now. <laughs> okay. So I, I think of it as a broadcasting channel that you're able to do whatever you want with and let your viewers help you learn what it is that they like to see. So you can get am amazing amounts of feedback. In fact, just today, I've never done this before, I am now going to be having a week full of Nielsen rating information. Have you oh, ever done the Nielsen thing? How exciting! How does that work? Well, they called me and said, and I actually took the call, I don't know why, but I did, and decided to do their survey. You know, they always say it's only five minutes. It turned into 15, but that's, you know, kind of the way it goes. And then they eventually send you this pamphlet where you're supposed to log in all the things that you watch for this week. And I've never done that before. But that's the kind of information that the, the networks need to have to know what people are watching. Well, we've got this... Actually, wondering about that when I was doing this summit, I was. It was just one of those idle thoughts. I wonder when the Nielsen ratings are going to get in on this. And yeah. Here you are. <laughs> oh no, they're, they're not. They're not in on it yet. That's just for watching TV, regular TV. I'm just saying that with the Hangout tools, our Hangout on Air tool, we've got the ability to get instant feedback right now. Oh. Right, and so that's something. This inner, it's basically interactive TV. If you do it that way. You can also make it primarily a presentation mode, which is what most people use it for. Um, and I just did a, um, a summit for a Social Media Examiner. It's called it Social Media Success Summit. And it, um, sorry, I got someone ringing me. I thought I had these muted. <laughs> I don't hear it. Okay, good. Then I had to decline it in three places. <laughs> All these people say we won't we are not getting our invites and I'm like, well, I get mine. But let me turn that off and mute things. Okay. So, um this social media success summit, I talked about the fact that a lot of people are using Hangouts for presentations, but you could be using them to show your personal side of your business. That's one of the best parts, I think, that's not being really utilized. And then the last part is in interactive. Make them interactive so that people are able to respond to you and you can bring that right into the show and back and forth. Not just people in the film strip, but people on the outside viewing. And that, that to me, is one of the, the really big things that a lot of people just have not mastered, and it's one of the best parts. Um, the other good thing, too, um, that I like about the Hangouts is that you can be in Colorado and I could be in Texas. Right. <laughs> so you can literally interview anyone from if they're on the planet and have you know an internet connection and a camera. Correct. Yeah, and and it's not just two. We could have up to ten people from de ten different parts of the world right here conversing together. And let's so, say you're doing a presentation in an in an event, right? Some people, you know, they still gather together physically, even though I do most of my activity now virtually. Um, you're doing this big thing and there might be people on the stage but you can also have a big projector that's showing your guest expert that happens to be from a different part of the world. Right. So they can be brought in as part of the panel that's part of a, an, a large event without having to fly. Uh, yes, I couldn't get people on board at the time but um, I forgot to mention that I am also a producer and in 2011, I believe it, the Hangouts came out around then. And I noticed because I love Google, uh -huh. and I tried to get one of my producers to um, to use it, like for um, for auditions, <laughs> right? And, and um, uh, table readings. But for the table read, they didn't know. We don't know about those Hangout thingies, and they went with the Skype thingy instead, which didn't work as well. But, um, yeah, that's when I noticed it was 2011. I'm like, oh, my goodness, this is such a great tool for, um, 
you know, film, TV producers, actors, um, anyone like that. Do you have any, any thoughts on yeah, whenever you're needing, whenever you're thinking about, okay, we need to interview this person, we need them to, to do certain things for us, <clears throat> we need to see what they look like and how they respond to questions and things like that, normally you would expect them to have to come to your physical location and meet with you. Right. You don't have to do that, especially on the initial meetings. You, you might want to eventually at the very end when you're ready to make a hire or a, or a purchasing decision with them, but Prior to that, you can just meet in these little hangout rooms, and it does not need to be broadcast. It's just you meeting with them in a hangout video call. So, so you can make them make a live call private. Well, the, there's that too. Yes, okay. but what I was talking about, let's talk about the big distinctions between the video parts. There's a hangout video call which does not get broadcast. It does not get recorded. It's just a video meeting room. Okay. A lot of people relate to that to being Skype. It's similar to Skype, but you can have ten people in the room and they can all, like you might have three producers for a show and you're interviewing four other people for different parts. They can all be there together. All of you. All producers, all interviewees or whatever you call the talent, you know, the auditionees. What do you call them? The people auditioning. Oh, the actors? Actors, okay. You can have <laughs> the actors there and they can all be seeing what's going on if you wanted them to or you could have them come in one at a time. You know, so however no you want to manage it. And no one has to get on a plane. And nobody has to get on a plane. No one has to spend three days for that one hour thing, right? You got a day to fly out, a day to fly back, and then the day that you're there. You can do this in, if it literally would normally take a, about to do that audition, it takes an hour. You're done. Okay, right. So, right. so that, that's the uh, non-broadcast. Right. Yeah. And so I, th I call this the productivity tool of the 21st century. I mean, when, when I need to talk to a client and we're needing to talk about what the project is and some clarification, I have done email and I continue to do email, but many times email doesn't get fully understood. And so you have to go back and forth three or four times. And I'm finding myself more and more saying, why don't we just do a hangout? We'll clear this up. And we do a hangout. And because of the extra ver visual, nonverbal information, we're able to tell, are you understanding or maybe you're not, and then instantly pivot and make it, make it different the way you're explaining something, and then you get it cleared up in a very short period of time, and then you can both move on. And since the Hangout tool is, is free, <laughs> yep. this is like a perfect tool for uh, independence also, right? Definitely, yeah. I mean, if you've, if you've ever in the past thought, I'd like to be able to do TV time. I want to make a commercial or I want to make a show. And I need to get all these things ramped up before I actually get that done. Now you can do that inside the Hangout. So the next layer, which I'll we'll just mention it right now so it's on the table, is the Hangout and Air broadcast will automatically make a YouTube video for you. Now YouTube... If you're used to YouTube, you usually have three levels of privacy, and you've got the same exact levels of privacy for Hangouts on Air. So you can make a public broadcast, you can make an unlisted broadcast, or you can make a private broadcast. So just like your YouTube video, you've got all those options when you're doing these broadcasts. So a lot of times I will meet with a client, and if we're wanting to record, like when I do training, um, so the Hangout Mastery is the place where it's sort of a community, but I also still do consulting one-on-one -on -one or with smaller groups. And what we do is we make a, I make a private Hangout on Air broadcast. So it's recorded, and then the client, I give them permission to view the video later, the client can watch it over and over and over and as long as they want. They can share it amongst their people. They just have to tell me who it is that they want me to add into the permission list. And then they have the ability to use that as training for other people. So it's it's a wonderful add-on for the ability to have our meeting recorded, uh -huh. whether it be training or discussion or an audition, etc. And then you can go back and review that later on. But the public doesn't ever need to see it. That's what I was thinking at the time. With the uh, the auditions would be absolutely perfect because you could record them because usually you know producers and directors want to go back and look it over and other people look it over, sure. but at the same time no one else has to see them. Right. So that that privacy thing, so you'll know, is a little bit tricky to manage because you have to actually give permission to every single person that might want to see it. 
Whereas if you did it as an unlisted Hangout on Air, unless somebody has that link and shares it with somebody else, nobody will ever find it. So the unlisted is sort of the nice middle ground where the whole world doesn't see it, but you can also share it easily with anybody that you want them to have it. You just tell them, please don't share this with others. It's just for you to see, that kind of thing. Okay, it's perfect. Um, so tell us a little bit about uh, people who would like to, let's say, break out um, with their own online show. Uh, what, how, what ways could the Hangouts work with that? Like, you know, there's some really talented cooks out there. and um, Yeah, so people could just start their own shows. How, how do you see that working, how, the future of Hangouts? Um, I see it being done by a lot of people, and I see it not working out so well um, <laughs> for some. For others, it's working wonderfully. And some of the indicators that are showing you that it's not working out that well is when they're struggling with the technology. And I've said this since almost day one. You've got to get to the point where the technology disappears is able to focus on your show or your message, what it is you're doing, not saying, oh, I've got to hit this button, and that's what you're talking about while you're actually doing your show. So that's one of the reasons why Hangout Mastery is so valuable for people because they can keep up to date with it or do a consulting you know, time with me or other people that train you. But here's the, the big deal in my mind. People try to start doing a show from day one. They say, okay, we're going to do a show, we're going to start doing this, and people should show up. I think they need to, first off, become known by being in other people's hangouts, if it's at all possible. So sort of as a path to follow, mm -hmm. I would encourage people to, you can practice doing unlisted hangouts on air so that nobody sees it and make sure you've got the technology good, but then eventually get yourself invited into other people's hangout on air broadcasts so that you can and how's it working, and then people that are viewers will actually see you, and they start to know you and eventually like you and trust you because they get to see you. And then it's a lot easier for you to build an audience that's going to watch your show if they have some point of reference as to who you are and what you seem to talk about. Um, that's how I got to know you before I actually met you today. Um, okay. <laughs> because you were on a lot of, yeah, a lot of other hangouts, and then I started following you, so that right. makes Perfect sense. Yeah, and the event, if you if people use the tool, a lot of people will take this Hangout broadcast and they stick it on their website and they try to drive traffic to their website, which is totally fine, but it, it tends to take away the event tool's capability. The event tool, when it's packaged in the event tool, it allows people in the public, if you're doing it publicly, I'm assuming, to decide they want to watch it without having to go to your website. Now, I'm saying it that way on purpose. A lot of people that don't know you yet aren't ready to jump over to your website. Okay, they they don't know you. They don't know if they want to go there, but they are in the social media space, and it's much more comfortable for them. So if you do activity that's visible in the social media space, and they come and watch you, then when they get to know you, that's a lot easier for them to transition over to visiting your website. So when when a company or an organization decides, okay. Our goal is to get more traffic on our website, so we're going to do this Hangout thing, and we're going to get people to come watch it on our website. I think sometimes that's where it fails. The audience isn't there. So what do you suggest? What type of social media works best? I suggest using, and I've drunk the Kool-Aid, okay, so <laughs> I, I suggest using Google Plus and the Hangout on Air event tools because then, as a, as a producer of a show, if you were to watch other people's shows that are related to what you're about to create, you can then gather an audience by starting to communicate with others in other people's events. You can maybe, here, here's sort of the path that I've seen that works well for people. Go to other people's events that the show is similar to what you're planning on doing. And then start interacting in the comments. When people see you interacting in the comments, they start to interact back with you you then know, okay, this is someone that seems to be interested in what I'm doing, then you add them to your circles, your grouping of people that you're following and that are maybe following you eventually. And when you start to continue to do that in the event environment, the host, hey, you know what, I like your commenting, I like what you're doing, would you like to be part of my show? And they reach out to you. And now you've been invited into the film strip. Okay, So you're growing your audience. 
You've gone just from commenting to now being inside the film strip. Then it's time for you to build your own Hangout on Air show because you already now have a group of people that you know are probably interested in following you still on Google+. And eventually, once there's a big enough following, then you could push people more over to your website if that's the primary place. But a lot of people do what I do is they'll do a Hangout on Air event, and when it's done, then they take the video and they embed it on their website. For people that happen to be on the website, they can watch things and stay on the website. But for new people that are discovering you, they might be easier found to discover you if it's in inside a social environment like Google Plus or Facebook or Twitter. You can put these videos anywhere you want. It's a video. <laughs> I actually never thought about putting a video on Twitter, but I guess if I'm putting the link there, technically the video is on Twitter, huh? Yep. <laughs> Jeez, for some reason, I just never thought about that. Oh, for instance, I have the summit on Google Plus first, and and also embedded on my website. So I mm -hmm. have places as we do this. Is that that a pretty good plan, or is that all right? <laughs> yeah, it, it's fine. I'm just saying the process of trying to get a crowd to watch what you're doing and then get excited about what you're doing and then tell other people about it is far easier when it's in an environment that everybody's comfortable with and they may not be comfortable with your website yet. Got it, got it. Now, technically, what sort of mistakes do you see that people make? <laughs> I got a long list of those. <laughs> I bet you do, but, but you know, maybe two or three. <laughs> yeah, just um, probably the most common mistakes that I encourage people, because it's so easy to fix, is to get good lighting. Get good lighting so it's shining on your face instead of from behind you. Like if you do a hangout and behind you there's a window and there's bright sunlight coming in, you look like you're in a witness protection program. <laughs> they just see a shadow. They can't see you. So you want good light on your face. Another thing that's pretty easy to fix is getting good sound. And good sound normally means getting a better microphone than what's built into your computer or do a headset. The reason why the headset is better is because when you have, especially when you have more people in the film strip, when it's just two people, it's not as bad of a deal. But when there's three or four or five people, then there tends to be a little bit more echo going on. When sound comes out of your speaker on your computer and goes right back into your microphone when someone else is talking, then that little bit of an echo can get worse and worse and worse. So the, the easy fix is get a headset. But a lot of people aren't wanting the look of a headset. <laughs> right? I mean, I, I, it's not like this is all new. Um, so the, the next tip to say instead of a headset is at least get earbuds. You know, get an earbud, something off your iPhone or your whatever you, wherever you got an earbud, just plug it in your computer and stick that in one ear. It's, Actually, I've seen people with two earbuds. I'm not sure yeah. how. Yeah, maybe it's a... Two earbuds is fine. I'm just saying if you're trying to minimize the visual impact of of the headset or the earbuds, then one is going to be easier to hide, I guess. Okay, so it's really the basic things in TV and film producing. Uh, light, sound. Mm -hmm. yeah. <laughs> yeah. All the things that can make or break. Yeah, and then, then another another thing that might, that happens fairly recently to new people, newbies, I call them, that are just experimenting or just learning the tool is sometimes they'll be in their broadcast but also have the video playing of the broadcast on yeah. another browser window, right? And then the dilemma is, the reality is when I say this to you right now, the viewers don't see it for 30, about 30 seconds. So there's a 30-second delay. And if that sound of the playing video is 30 seconds behind what we're saying now, people are getting confused. Where's that sound coming from? And it gets very distracting. So that's another thing that I see fairly recently. I or did, fairly often, I guess. Yeah, yeah I did that the uh, first guest of my first show last year. <laughs> huh? Yep, it was. It can happen. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, so that wasn't fun. Okay, um, so... Just for instance, if someone wanted to, like, take a, a video camera, could they hook that up to um, Hangouts rather than just a... Just a webcam? Yeah, rather yeah. than a webcam. 
Um, that's a good question. I'm asking it a fair amount for those that want to be able to zoom in or have better focusing capability or better white balance and all of these kind of things. That is possible, but it's going to cost you more money. The reason why it's going to cost you more money is you need to have some type of an interface between the camera and your computer generally because the Hangout tool itself is optimized to work with webcams, USB connected cameras. Okay. So if you can turn your higher quality video camera into a USB plug-in, then there's a much better chance you're going to be able to see that inside the Hangout and Air choices of tools. In other words, I can grab this camera or I can grab that camera. You have certain settings where you can grab the camera and let that be seen. Um, but normally, just a plain old cable, isn't it? You've got to get more techy, nerdy into it. And there's a company called Black Magic Designs, mm -hmm. or just look up Black Magic. Um, just Google one word, Black Magic. You will see some different tools that you're able to get where you can plug in higher end cameras and then take out of the Black Magic interface a USB type connection or depending on how you've got it connected it might be just a card that you stick into your computer um, depending on which one you're looking at that's going to give you more options to get higher-end cameras connected to your hangout on air interface or your hangout interface okay I was just curious because um, you know some people who have a background in producing might want to get more more detailed with the Hangouts is what I was thinking, and they might want to, you know, do better quality with the cameras or think think they could get better quality. But on that note of webcams, what you said get a higher quality webcam, what would you suggest? The webcams I suggest be the least expensive and best quality mix, and the Logitech C920 is a very commonly used camera. It's, in fact, that's what I'm using right now. Okay. And there's another Logitech that's coming out or that has come out to sort of replace that. And depending on when you're watching, there may be another one. <laughs> but, um, the one that's called the C930 is one that I am actually having delivered to my place today. I just hadn't didn't have it time in time to, to stick on the computer. The reason why I'm looking at the C930 is because I'm running Macintosh computers. And the C920 works on the Mac, even though they officially say they don't support it. But the C930 is officially supported on the Mac and the PC. And so because of that, that's something that I'm going to be testing out and make sure that, you know, for piece wanted to make sure I was a little bit more up to date with some of the newer hardware. And newer, like I said... If you're watching this a year from now, there may be a C940 or a C950 or who knows what. <laughs> but but basically stay in that range. And about um, about what, what what price range, just to give people an idea sure. if they don't know, um, you know, say these, these are obsolete, but what kind of price range? In sure, the price range I think is generally going to be between the $70 to $120 price okay. range. Thank you. Mm-hmm. Okay. Now those have built-in microphones. I don't suggest using them. <laughs> <laughs> They're a webcam. I suggest using them for being a webcam. And then, like for example, I'm using a headset uh -huh. because I don't mind. I don't have the hair that I, you know. I don't have hair, so let you know, stick something on my head. It's okay. Um, if you're using a headset, you can go El Cheapo, like what I've got right here. This is this is a thirty-dollar headset. Okay, you can spend a lot more money, but the $30 one seems to work fine for me. In fact, I've got two or three of them because, you know, I might be traveling and I want to take one and leave one. So the headsets, um, the one I'm using is made by Jasco, J-A-S-C-O. Can we can give a link to that in the event area. It's also marketed by GE. I actually bought the one from GE because it came with more cables. Okay. <laughs> The Jasco one, even though it's made by Jasco, was shipped with fewer cables. At least that's what people are telling me nowadays. So I went to Office Max or Office Depot and just got the GE headset, wireless headset. In fact, here, I have kept it around. Here's the packaging. <laughs> it says GE, what is it, uh, hands-free headset. 
<laughs> and 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 we are not getting any promotional. Yeah, no promotional. <laughs> there. And if you want to see what the Logitech box looks like, I have that too. This is the Logitech C920 box. Soon I'll have the C930. <laughs> I know, isn't it good that in the Hangouts you only see so much you can have things stored everywhere and no one else. Yes. <laughs> I call it the cone of cleanliness. <laughs> now, tell me something. As this is actually something I'm curious about. Where did you get your background that says Hangout Mastery? Yeah. Um, yeah. How do people get something like that? That backdrop was made for me by Laurie Lazur, and I can give um, a link to her profile. She has, um, what's it called? Something walls. I should know this. She makes custom design um, wallpaper. Oh. And or banners like this, so I sent her the logo, and she sent me back this thing that I'm actually hanging from. Don't tell anyone. A shower curtain rod. <laughs> I've thought about that. I've thought about a shower curtain. Because <laughs> I do these, and and you know this this is we're talking real life here. I have a room in my house that I use as my office, and I've got good light in front of me and up above me. And I've got a shower curtain rod hanging that thing there. And if you may notice on that side, there's sort of a darker thing. Uh huh. That's a shower curtain. <laughs> I've got two of them on both sides. And when I need to, because for some people that I do this for, with, they don't want my branding. They just want what they're doing. Uh -huh. I close it right in front of there. And so when I'm needing that, I just go up there. It takes me less than a minute to go over, reach over, and close things. So I have two shower curtain rods right next to each other. One is holding the banner, and then the other one has a shower curtain or two that I just close. That is awesome. Thank you so much for sharing your secrets. Yeah. <laughs> I was wondering how that got done. Um, geez, I just had another question. What was it, Tom? Um, it was about production, about production. Oh, is there a way to make green screen work with uh, the Hangouts? Yeah, there is. There are limits to what platform you're using, though. I'm on a Mac, and so I can't say it's wonderful when you do this because the Mac doesn't seem to have that um, software-wise. But there's more tools available for PC users that bring in green screen. Okay. One dilemma, which if you're familiar with the terminology, there's a thing called spill where you see sort of a little green halo around oh, you. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. That tends to happen more frequently when we're trying to do this live stuff because there's a you know there's a lot of activity going on really fast and the green screen software isn't perfect okay and so if you're okay with a slight spill meaning a little bit of green glow here and there depending on how much movement you're doing um, there's a thing called XSplit that's a commonly used one software for the PC and you can also do some of that with what's called Manicam uh, but Manicam is available on the Mac and the PC, but the PC version is far superior at this point to what the Mac has as far as green screening capability. Okay, I was just curious. It, go, it went along with your Hangout Mastery in the background um, for people trying to set up, let's say they want to do a talk show or something, or you know, they come on and they do something. You know, I was just wondering, could there be like a green screen that, that makes it look like, you know, you have a nicer house than you really do, or sure. <laughs> yeah. you're sitting in a nicer area, or it looks more like an office or something. You yeah, exactly. Sure. Yeah, and, and they, they have that. We have that. In fact, there's a real basic version that's built into the Hangout. Um, it's called Google Effects. There's a thing called background, and you can do that. I I've never seen it work well. Well, <laughs> okay. Oh. But conceptually, it's there, uh, and that's a free tool given to us by Google. There's also something that's less complex than having a green screen in the background. It's this thing I have down on the bottom. It's called the lower third. So the lower third is something that you can make and build for free. It's part of the Hangout toolbox. And what I've done here is instead of using the standard stuff, I just made a graphic, a customized graphic that looks like this. And I can do different ones based on different shows that I might be doing and just turn them on, turn them off, that kind of thing. Oh, that's right, because I know you have several that, that you have. Yeah, like if uh, I'll, I'll see how well this is going to work for us. <laughs> <laughs> so I'll go over here. I've got, um, when I do a show that's called TNT, I'll uh -huh. turn this thing on. This is called TNT Bootcamp. 
Oh, wow. That, okay. that looks good. So that's one we do for that. I've got a relatively new show that I'm testing out called Hangout Tech Talk, which I, I made this one for. Okay. And it's then let's, there was, if I'm wanting to promote my Hangout Mastery thing, then I do this. There's a link to the Hangout Mastery area. Now, these are custom lower you, Yeah, I've made all these as custom. Uh, I'm trying to see if I have any normal ones. <laughs> Uh, here's a, I think here's a standard looking one. Yeah, there you go. Oh, yeah. this, this, the one you have up, this is this is, comes with Google. You can just make it with Google. Right. The, it's built into the what's called the Hangout Toolbox, and the subsection within the toolbox, because the toolbox has multiple tools, is the one called Lower Third. And this, I did a, um, I did some remote broadcasting, which is another whole conversation. Um, where I use this thing right here. This is called my TV truck. It's my cell phone. Okay, so I went. Um, in this case, I was in a an air show in Oshkosh, Wisconsin, called the EAA or Experimental Aviation Association thing, and I was helping people broadcast live. So we we made this for our lower thirds. Oh, the morning okay. the morningcup.net. Well, you just showed us the phone. Um... Can you do a hangout on the phone? You can. Uh, you can do. Let me turn back on my other thing. Where did it go? See, I have these saved as presets, so I can just turn them on. But I have a bunch of them, so I got to find the right one. There we go. The the tools that we've got to do this broadcasting, we've got computers, we've got you know desktops, we've got laptops, and we've also got tablets or cell phones. Anything that has a camera, you can do a hangout with, mm -hmm. or a hangout on air. The catch is, there's one big caveat with the Hangout and Air thing, is you think yourself, when you're with a, with a cell phone, you're a remote reporter. So you are the remote reporter that's brought into the Hangout broadcast, the Hangout and Air. You cannot initiate or start a Hangout and Air from a cell phone. But you can join into a Hangout and Air that's on a desktop or a laptop that's started for you. Oh, okay. Okay, got it. So... So that's another thing we do with the Hangout Mastery people. <laughs> I, yeah, as we segue into that. Yeah, um, I, I have... We talk about that while I look and see if we have any more questions. Talk okay, about what you sure. do in there. What, what I've done with the Hangout Mastery people is I ask them, I say, okay, who here wants to learn the process for running some Hangouts and will work with me when I'm on a remote location? And I'm going to need, you know, we, we get people to sign up for different time slots. Like we've did this at South by Southwest multiple years in a row now, and then we also did one at, um, like I said, the air air show in Oshkosh. And so they get to learn the process, but I also get to take advantage of the fact that they want to learn it, and I train them as well as they are now able to start the broadcast for me while I'm on a remote location. Oh, okay. So now they're getting good experience, and I'm getting assistance in helping me because I can't start it on my cell phone. Okay, so they start it for you and then you join in. Right. And but so as a result, I made what in Google Plus we have two main entities. We have a profile or we have a page. And so I made a page to do these types of broadcasts because then 10, 20, 30 people can be signed up to assist and they're all becoming what are called page managers. And so they're able to start up on behalf of the page a Hangout broadcast and then invite me in on my cell phone. Wow, okay, that's, that is wonderful. Um, do you have any, any, anything else that you'd like to share with the, our audience um, as to how uh, the mastery can help them get started and, and why they should use something like the mastery to get started before they just hop on a, a live broadcast? Certainly. <laughs> uh, yeah. Um, let, let me, instead of just going straight to the mastery, let's talk about the the process that you might want to do. We, and we, okay. we talked about it bre before, but I want to just sort of do a recap. Okay. If it's possible, you want to try to use the Hangout tool that's not the broadcast. Okay, just get that thing started. Get used to being inside of it. Then transition into doing Hangouts on Air that are unlisted so that other people aren't watching and you can just sort of get a, a feel for how it looks after the fact. Then 
go into other people's events, start commenting with them, get known, and eventually get invited into their Hangouts on Air so you can be in the film strip of their show. And then as the last step, start up your own shows. If you go through that learning process, you'll be far better along the process and, and you end up with better results. In the middle of all of that, when you start having questions, then come into the Hangout Mastery because you know what questions to ask. Because honestly, when people start up things, they don't know what to ask. You know, what I here's a button, what do I do with it? I'll help you with that, but you will probably get most of your value is after you've tried to do something and it just didn't work the way you expected or you just need more help now. That's probably the best time to start to come into a place like the Hangout Mastery or Con. one-on-one, -on -one, and if they want to continue the updating and keeping up to speed with it all, then come into the mastery group, because that's where everybody gets updated as quickly as possible. Well, thank you, Ronnie. I see other people on, but they are not asking questions, so... Okay. No worries. Thank you for being here, and um, if you click on the, on the link on G+, if you're on G+, it says official website. That will take you to the Hangout Helper. If you are on uh, Web TV Trailblazers uh, website, there's a big blue button that says Hangout Helper, and that will take you to the information page. And uh, Ronnie, you want to go ahead and just uh, shout out what the uh, uh, website address is? Sure. Yeah, right down here where I've got my name, I've also got The Hangout Helper. If you just add a .com at the end of that, you'll be there. So thehangouthelper.com is my primary website. From there, you can sign up for newsletters to help you keep up to date as well as move on over into the membership area called Hangout Mastery. So thehangouthelper.com. Okay. Well, thank you so much for giving us your time today, Ronnie. I was actually making notes myself, so, <laughs> um, and Great. I know I need more practice. And um, just so appreciate uh, you being here and all this uh, wonderful information you gave us. For all you producers and, and directors and all that, I mean, really, this is a really cool tool. And, and actors. And actors, and right? Actors. Yes. <laughs> if you are invited into one of these to do an audition, it's nice to know that you have an idea of what's going on. There you go. All right. Thank you, Ronnie, so much. And thank you, everybody. And um, come visit our website, uh, webtvtrailblazers.com, and uh, check in on Ronnie, too. And thank you so much for being here. My pleasure. Thanks for having me. All right. Bye-bye.